Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today I would like to look at um, swing quantization and why you might want to use swing quantization from time to time. So uh, most of the time when you're writing music in Soundtrap, especially as a beginner, you're going to quantize everything to the even eighth note meaning that we are going to divide each beat into exactly half as we go along. So if you're counting in your head, that kind of sounds like one and two and three and four and, and two and three and four and. But we're going to find out, hopefully through this little exercise, that that's not always the way that music is recorded. Sometimes in jazz music, sometimes in pop music, sometimes in R&B music, um, rap music, the, the eighth notes are divided unevenly, meaning like instead of being at exactly the halfway point, maybe it's closer to the two thirds point and sounds more like da, 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 do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, ba, do, ba, do, ba, ba, da. Those eighth notes are not divided evenly. So let's just think about the jazz drum set for just a second. I've got the jazz brushes uh, kit pulled up right here. And the typical jazz pattern that we would um, go with has a kick drum on one and three, a snare drum hit on two and four, and then we would like to add a different, uh, we want to ride the bell on a ride cymbal, and it goes one, two, and three, four, and one. And so we kind of get this. Uh, So that's the rhythm we're looking for because that's kind of a good jazz rhythm. But I've applied it here to the um, pattern tool in Soundtrap because I want you to see what happens. So this is going to play hopefully the rhythm that I just played. So let's see what happens. Does that sound exactly the same? Because what I played sounded like this. So, well, maybe it was because it was a different tempo. So mine was a little slower that I played physically. Hmm. Nope, that doesn't seem to line up. Well, let's try, let's try a different. Uh, method. We're going to get rid of, of this just a second. We're going to go to our piano roll and we're going to, we're just going to record. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. Okay. Now let's take a look at this on the piano roll. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it. And if you've worked with me very much, you know that after you record anything, you should use Control A and your pointer tool to select. Control A, if you're on a Windows key, and you should always quantize up to the 16th note, right? So let's see, let's see if this sounds right. Oh man, that's all over the place. Well, one, this is in the wrong place. And let's see if that fixes it. Well, that just totally bizarre there. So we got to figure out what in the world is happening to create these effects. This is just not good. Nope, that's still not getting it. Hmm. So maybe we need to, I also like to always change my grid to 16th notes. 
But in this case, let's look at a grid in eighth notes. So this is a grid evenly divided into eighth notes, and we can see that our symbols are on those even eighth notes. But that doesn't sound jazzy, so we're going to try something different. Instead of quantizing to the 16th note, or the 8th note in this case, we're going to try quantizing to the 8th note swing. Now, when I do this, I want you to watch what happens to this note that falls on the upbeat of beat 4. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to quantize to the 8th note swing. And we're going to leave swing amount in the middle. Push it up. Oh, there we go. So there's minimal. And now watch this note right here on the eighth note. See how it slides back and forth? Now we're going to hit done. Now this note and this note that were on the eighth note upbeats, they've actually slidden to be roughly two-thirds of the way across the beat. So now let's listen to this groove. So now I've got a much more accurate jazz feel. And that is what we are going for. So that swing quantization has created the uh, swing quantization has created the effect of what we're looking for. So here we go. Here's a four measure loop on that. Now we're going to add some piano across the top of that so here we go well that just got really bizarre so I'm going to undo that because I accidentally recorded right on top of the drums at the same time I did the piano. So here's the piano part that I just played. And I'm going to, again, select all the piano notes. And I'm going to quantize to the swing. We're hopefully doing the same exact one. So we left it up and even. So I'm going to adjust my knob back to even. And now you'll see everything begins to lock in again. So now our piano part should lock in with the drum part. Now let's record a little bit of a saxophone part in on top of that. And I'm going to use the blues scale. Here we go. Now, as I played that, I played swung eighth notes. But I'm just going to give you an example. If I quantize this to the even eighth note, once again, it's not going to sound the way I had hoped it would sound. A little random note up there. Delete that one. So that doesn't really line up with what was happening. Um, once again, we're going to quantize this to the swing eighth note. It looks like it got a little off. Yeah, that lines up better. So against the even eighth notes, the saxophone part doesn't really line up now. And it sounds a little... Uh, a little wonky, to say the least. For some reason, this keeps unquantizing, which is very strange. And then we're going to look at this line, and now we're going to quantize again to the swing eighth note. Offsets these eighth notes just a little bit. Now everything should line up beautifully. 
Does this for the fifth time. Yeah, so now we have a well-quantized swing rhythm that sounds a lot more funky and not quite so straight and even as before. So this is why you would potentially want to use swing quantization uh, within your project. So I hope you have found this helpful. Uh, if you have, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There's more where this comes from.